We've got the latest on the ferry sinking tragedy in South Korea. And media students take a closer look at the effects of geotagging. Those stories and more on today at Chat State. Hi, I'm Andrew Cavett. And I'm Karen Jones. So are you ready for the end of school? It's been a fantastic semester, but yeah, yeah, I am. So am I. The search for s passengers on a sunken South Korean ferry continues. More than 200 are still missing, and the death toll stands at 87. Tori Dunham has more as families wait anxiously for answers. As the days pass, optimism begins to wane. Families anxiously wait, hoping for survivors as more bodies are brought ashore. The conditions are so bad, my heart aches. We're going in thinking there may be survivors. When we have to come back with nothing, we can't even face the families. Divers are turning their focus to the ship's cafeteria. That's where officials believe most of the students were when the ship started sinking. We're all volunteers. We're in the same position. We cry every day and search for the missing people. I cry whenever I think about it. But for many, the dialogue now shifts from hope to anger. Strong words coming from South Korea's president. The actions of the captain and some of the crew members are absolutely unacceptable, unforgivable actions that are akin to murder. The captain is facing a slew of criminal charges, including abandoning his boat and negligence. Four more crew members have also been arrested. Now investigators are working to figure out why so many passengers couldn't escape. Newly released radio transcripts suggest the ferry tilted so quickly that it became nearly impossible for many passengers to reach lifeboats. I'm Tori Dunnan reporting. A year after the Boston Marathon bombings, we see the recovery and strides the city has made to stand together. Last Monday, the 2014 Boston Marathon took place. Polo Sandoval has the details. With extra security measures in place, runners laced up and took to the streets of Boston for the 118th Boston Marathon. The race marks a milestone one year after three people were killed and more than 200 wounded when a pair of bombs exploded near the finish line. This year revamped security along the 26.2 mile course with 3,500 law enforcement officers ensuring the safety of runners and over a million spectators. We're going to put a lot more officers in the crowds. You know, years past, we've had them sit inside the barriers. We never thought that someone would go to the extreme they went last year in, in destroying, you know, our city and our marathon. So, you know, we've had to adjust some of the some of the logistics and put more cameras out there. Organizers expanded the participant cap to accommodate the 5,000 athletes who were still on the course during last year's attack and unable to finish. Among them, Dick Hoyt. He's pushing his wheelchair-bound son, Rick. Just can't wait to get up in the starting line and get started and head into Boston. Today's going to be very emotional, yeah, no doubt about it. The crowds here in Boston Common expected to grow as those runners cross the finish line. They'll make their way here to a staging area where you see a virtual sea of support waits for them. They're banners with messages of support for them. In Boston, I'm Polo Sandoval reporting. Well, I'm really glad everything was fine. Security was tighter. Did you follow the race? I did, and there were some great Samaritans that helped uh, one guy cross the finish line. I'm just glad they got it together and everybody got through the race very well. It's a good thing that there are still some good people left. That's right. <laughs> Do you geotag? The latest trend is to tag yourself or your friends in places that you are. Our own Catherine Harris lets us know why you should be cautious about letting others know where you are. Geotagging has been around for years, but how many people actually know what it is? For some people, geotagging might be a fun social interaction, but for others, it means murder. An app like Foursquare, Flickr, or even Instagram allows you to check where your friends are, what's close by, or even where to get a good steak. First, you log on to the app, then you check into your location. Rate it if you want link it to your favorite social media site, 
then wait for the dangerous people to find you. I spoke to one application buff, Chase Burnett, on his take. I think it's really cool. You know, everybody knows where you're at and you can check into certain places. You can even rate places like if you go to a restaurant, you can rate it how your experience was and how the food was and stuff. It's really cool. What about murder? Murder? Uh, well, it is pretty, uh, you know, there's some crazy people out there, I guess. So ha having an app where they can find me would be bad. So murder is bad. Do you really want people knowing where you're at all the time? Janessa and Valicia had a different take. That's how you become popular. But what about stalkers? Stalkers? You mean followers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope they're not followed to their death. So just be careful when, why, how, and what you're posting. For today at Chess State, I'm Katherine Harris. Have you been to the Tennessee Aquarium lately? If not, then you may notice some new personalities in the penguin exhibit. Brittany Zimp tells us more on the penguin transfer program. You may have visited the Tennessee Aquarium here in Chattanooga a time or two. If you have, you've probably stopped to see the penguins. But did you know that the aquarium isn't their permanent home? In fact, some of the penguins don't even belong to the aquarium. The penguins, the young chicks, which there are 11 of, they're going to be leaving um, and headed to California eventually. That's going to happen on April 20th. Keepers from um, SeaWorld in California are going to actually come and help us do the transport. They have transported animals and penguins several times. So they're going to come and give us a tutorial and give us a hands-on experience and help us figure out the best way to transport these birds. The reason that we need to do this is so that the chicks can find mates. Ultimately we don't have enough mates for them here and you don't want the same birds that are closely related breeding year after year. It's just not healthy for the population. So we'll move those youngsters out and then as they hit maturity they'll have their choice of a lot of different mates. They'll be able to breed and then it'll give our adult birds the chance to breed again. For the Chattanooga State, I'm Brittany Zahn. It's about that time of year again when we say goodbye to some of our classmates. Graduation is on May 10th and time is of the essence to complete any paperwork and take care of any holes on your accounts. If you have any questions, see your advisor. Also be sure to pick up your graduation regalia and tickets on April 22nd and 23rd in the Student Center. I can't believe the graduation is the day it was upon us. How yes, much longer do you have? I graduate in fall, so um, congratulations to all the graduates. Let's take a look at weather. Here's Matthew Johnson. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful week this week with sunny skies and temps steadily rising, peaking at 80 degrees on Friday. Your weekend may be partly cloudy, but it should be enough sun out there to soak up. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matthew. Well, that's about it for today at Chat State. Be sure to check us out each week online on Comcast Cable 3. Thanks for watching. Dumb. Stupid. Crazy. Dangerous. Stinks. In one word, would I do dope? Nope. These kids are right. Drugs will hurt your mind, your body, and your life. Hi, my name is Chris Willis, Associate Professor at Chattanooga State Community College, and I have a great idea for the upcoming semester. Don't do drugs. There's no hope in dope.